Wonderful. Well, for those of you who are here, thank you for joining us today on the Jack's Liquor Store Instagram page. Uh, my name is Kevin Brownlee. I'm a single malt ambassador with Bacardi. And today we're going to be talking about a few different whiskeys that are available at, exclusively at Jack's Liquor Stores throughout the Lower Mainland. And we're going to walk through making a, a wonderful Aberfeldy 16-year hot toddy. So, you know, just as an example for something for those of you who are here now to think about when you're at home, one of the ingredients in a hot toddy uh, is a little bit of a syrup. You can use honey, you can use white sugar, cane sugar, whatever your preference is. But I've got everything started here. So I've got 150 mils of white sugar and I've got 250 mils of a cinnamon and clove water that's essentially just brewing, it's steeping. So I'm infusing this water with cinnamon and clove, which are two wonderful flavors to work with some of the whiskey flavor notes in the Aberfeldy 16. And this is gonna work perfectly for our Teeling Hot Toddy. So to make this, I started steeping this just prior to jumping in here. So if you are feeling adventurous and you wanna get into your kitchen today, just take 250 mils of boiled water, a stick of cinnamon, break it up, and about six or seven cloves. Let it sit for about 10 minutes. Alternatively, what you can do is you can boil those ingredients into a pan of water to infuse that water, but I'm basically gonna take 150 mils of this infused cinnamon clove water, add it to the sugar to make a syrup, to show you how easy it is to do at home, so that you have a fantastic seasonal syrup that you can use for your cocktail making. Now, this is just a, a real simple method. You know, we're using a little strainer to keep the solids off. And then I'm just gonna stir this up just to dissolve the sugar, but we're not gonna to spend too much time doing that today. I just wanted to give this for you as an example on to how to make your syrup. But we are gonna get right into making the drink because I've got some pre-made cinnamon and clove syrup here now. So the hot toddy is one of the oldest hot drinks that you can have. And so we're gonna use a wonderful single malt whiskey, 16 years from Aberfeldy Distillery up in Perth. So this is a Highland style whiskey. And for those of you who are familiar with whiskeys, Highland and Speyside whiskeys have some similarities. Traditionally, Highland whiskeys are tend to be thought of as being a little bit more robust, a little bit spicier. Uh, this whiskey itself falls right into that. It's got a really beautiful, delicate bouquet of citrus, lots of honeyed notes. It's going to get a little bit of sherry cask finishing, so you've got some ripe fruits in there as well. And you get a bit of char. Now, it's an unpeated whiskey, so for those of you who aren't familiar or uh, aren't fans of peated whiskey, this is something that, where you can approach the category in a whole new way. So. We have a 12 year, a 16 and a 21. This 16 year is gonna work beautifully with this. So we've got our two ounces of Aberfeldy 16. I'm just gonna use a quarter ounce, which is about you know roughly 10 mil. Put that right in there. I've got some fresh squeezed lemon juice that I just squeezed, so we know it's fresh. Quarter ounce as well. Then I'm gonna to top it with some boiled water. So. It's as simple as that. You don't have to spend too much time. You don't need a lot of fancy tools. You need a kettle, you need a glass that can withstand some heat, a spoon, stove. So our drink is just gonna incorporate like that and we're gonna finish it off with a little cinnamon stick and a lemon studded clove. So a little fancy, you know, we don't necessarily always get fancy at home, but if you're having guests or rather you're with your household and you're playing it safe and you wanna spice things up, you can take care of that. So that right there, is a fantastic expression of Aberfeldy 16 in a traditional toddy. So to recap, now I can't quite see the questions, but I'll get back to this. But to recap, it's two ounces of Aberfeldy 16 year, a quarter ounce of fresh lemon juice, a quarter ounce of the cinnamon and clove syrup, which again here, you can see that that sugar is starting to dissolve. I would need to stir it a little bit to break it down, but we're not gonna focus on that today because our drink's ready. So two ounces of Aberfeldy 16, quarter ounce of any sort of heartier spiced simple syrup, a quarter ounce of lemon juice, and then about four ounces of boiled water. And you've got yourself a fantastic drink that's gonna take care of these rainy day blues. Now, this whiskey is part of this family. And the malts that we're gonna talk about today all belong to the John Dewar's family of malts. So the Dewar's family were pioneers in the whiskey industry. They started back in 1846 as a, as a, uh, as a merchant, and so they were buying in whiskeys and blending them and selling them, and they were the first to put their name on the bottle. Now, that statement that you're gonna see on a bottle, for those of you that don't know, anytime you see a number on a whiskey bottle, that number is indicative to the youngest whiskey in the bottle. Now, there are 40 whiskeys in this blend. So, while, while blended whiskey sometimes gets a bit of a bad rep as not having as much quality as single malt, the thing to know is that all whiskeys are blended. 
Blended Scotch whiskies have a combination of malt whiskies and grain whiskies. They're distilled separately, produced separately, aged individually, and then at the minimum of 12 years, our master blender, Stephanie McLeod, who is a two-time back-to-back uh, master blender of the year, takes these 40 whiskies, blends them, puts them in a neutral vat, and then rests them for a further six months together so that they can harmonize and come together as a flavor in the bottle. So they were the first to really do this double aging in the whiskey category. This whiskey itself is fantastic in highballs. It makes a wonderful penicillin. It's great just with soda. Uh, you know, there's no right or wrong way for you to enjoy your whiskey as long as you're doing it responsibly. If you want to add ice, so be it. If you want to add a touch of water, that water is going to open up layers of complexity in your whiskey. Now, it's not necessarily needed for all whiskeys, but it's great for most. So in a blended whiskey, this is great for cocktail mixing. It's great on ice. This at the Aberfeldy Distillery is the ancestral home of the Dewar's family. So very different. You got a blended whiskey, lighter, a little bit more um, diverse in character profile. Then you have a single malt whiskey at Aberfeldy that's quite pronounced in flavor. You're going to get some char, some baked apples, you're going to get a bit of spice, lots of honey notes. And then we move over to another whiskey that we're going to look at today that is just a fantastic single malt. This is the Craig Ellicke 13. Now, if you look at that name, it's a bit of a tongue twister. Sometimes you get Craig Ellicke, Craig Ellicke. Anything that you need to say to get it out, it's a bit of a, it's a, bit of a mouthful. But it's, spelled, it's said Craig Ellicke. Like, Craig and Ella have a key. It's uh, coincidentally a town in British Columbia where they laid the Golden Spike when they connected the CP and the CN railways. It was a town of Scottish railroaders, so naturally that town took after this town's name. Now, this is a very different style of whiskey. Now, where Aberfeldy has some very delicate harmony in its glass, this has got some big, robust flavors. They use a different method. Now, for those of you who are familiar with some whiskey production, what you need to do is you've got to soak your malt, and then you've got to stop it from germinating because you don't want it to fully open up. You want to have some sugars that you can convert into alcohol. Now, what you do is once you have a wet malt that's been soaked, is you have to lay it out on a floor that's perforated with hot air blowing up over top of it. A lot of Scottish distilleries use peat, uh, which is why a lot of people think of peated whiskey uh, when they think of Scottish whiskey. Craig Ellicke doesn't use peat, but what they do to stop that when they're malting their whiskies is they have an oil-fired kiln. So they're burning an oil-fired kiln. So that oil smoke is rising up, heating the barley, attaching to the wet barley, and in introducing a bit of a sulfurous cordite flavor. So that flavor note is akin to something like uh, gunpowder. So you're going to get a bit of a smoke and a char and a big flavor, but it's not a peated flavor. So very different method in terms of how they produce the whiskey. This is also a non-chill filtered whiskey. So non-chill filtered whiskeys are going to be at 46%, a little bit higher, 6% higher in ABV than most. And what that means is that if you were to add water to this whiskey, it would open up and it would cloud up a little bit because the whiskey itself still has some of its fatty acids inside of the glass, inside of this bottle. Whereas a whiskey that's been chill filtered won't have that same reaction. When you're chill filtering, you're pulling back some of those heavier notes that are, work well in some whiskeys and in others they choose not to have them. But the Craig Ellicke whiskey, this is, someone best described this as a shotgun through a pineapple. So you're going to get some tropical fruit notes. You're going to get some big, robust, smoky flavors. You're going to get really nice malts, some good honey characteristics. And if you are lucky enough and you're out in the lower mainland at a Jack's liquor store and you happen to come across a Craig Ellicke 17 year bottle, don't pass on it. Don't sleep on it. This is one of my personal favorite whiskeys of all time. A little bit different in color. I'll bring it up close to you guys. You can see that's indicative of some more time in the barrel. It's also potentially got a little bit of sherry cast finishing. So when you see dark, rich amber notes in a whiskey, oftentimes you can ask yourself, how long has it been in the barrel? Has it seen secondary finishing? Secondary finishing is a term where you're taking that initial whiskey that's rested for 12, 15, 17 years, and you're giving it a little bit of extra time in a second cask just to kind of take on some of those flavors. And that's what this whiskey here has done such a tremendous job at doing. This is a, a beautiful whiskey known as Royal Bracola. This is one of the oldest distilleries in Scotland. It was the first whiskey to receive the King's Warrant, which is essentially a seal from the King William in 1812 that said that this whiskey was of the most superior quality. Now, these don't come around very often. I know that Jax has some now, so this is a special treat. Uh, if you can get out there and you're a fan of robust, big, rich, dark chocolate, a little bit of toffee, berries, and some spice, 
then this is the type of whiskey you like. What they do is they finish this in a first fill Oloroso sherry cask. So Oloroso sherry is from Spain. Often what happens is when those casks are finished in the sherry world, they're sold into the whiskey world. You've got a surplus of sherry casks available. If you're a whiskey producer and a blender and you want to add some extra layers of complexity to the whiskey that you've produced and you've distilled and aged already, what you can do is you can get into some secondary finishing. And this is filled in a, a first fill sherry cask. So first fill sherry casks are going to lend a lot of rich ripe fruits. It's European oak, which is different than the American oak that's often used for uh, the Scottish whiskey world. And so with this variety, you can kind of start to see, and I'm going to recap this so that you can follow along and maybe start to slot where your palate lies and where your preferences in whiskey are. But we work our way from a blended Scotch whiskey that has 40 whiskeys in it, Dewar's 12, minimum 12 years, double aged, phenomenal price point. It's hard to beat this value on a blended Scotch whiskey. Then we move into the family affair of Aberfeldy. Now, keep in mind, 40 whiskeys in this bottle, some of them happen to be Aberfeldy. Some of them are Craig Ellicke. Because blended Scotch whiskeys still have a certain ratio of single malt whiskeys in them, along with other grain whiskeys. So what you're doing with a blended whiskey is you're taking more pronounced full flavors in a single malt and leaner, lighter backbone flavors from a grain whiskey aging them, blending them, resting them in an oak vat, which is what they did. They were the first to pioneer this method, which is so common in the whiskey world now. And then they started to bottle it. Really ingenious family, lovely whiskey to sip from. If you want something a little bit more fuller and pronounced in flavor, then don't go too far. There's Aberfeldy 12 and Aberfeldy 16, 21. Now, something interesting takes place over those times. I'm sure many of you here have had a 12-year whiskey, and I don't doubt that many of you have had 16-year. 21-year whiskeys, a little bit rare, don't see them as often, but if you get an opportunity to try aged whiskeys, it's important to know what happens to that whiskey. It's the same whiskey at 12 years that's going on for another 9 years to 21, but that oak is changing so much. You're changing the characteristics of that whiskey. It's going to have influences from the cask. You're going to get vanillins. You're going to get some tannins. You're going to get some wood acid that might have come at a later age. But from 16 to around 18, where you see a lot of barrel quality, and you shift over to 21, you're going to see less of the barrel quality and some more of the barrel environment. So the flavor profile takes on some of the barrel house flavor notes. Think of the climate in Scotland. It's wet. It's damp. The barrels are sitting a long time. They're not, sometimes they're moved. Sometimes they often just sit still as they do. So over time, oak being a porous substance is going to allow whiskey to evaporate through the angel's share. Eventually you're going to have some evaporation and some condensation from inside that storehouse that's going to work its way into the whiskey to allow some beautiful flavor notes. You know, you move away from the oak characteristics where you get big, strong spice, lots of vanilla, and perhaps you move into some more of a umami style notes and you get some mushroom and some fungus. Just an interesting uh, evolution that takes place inside a cask that often doesn't get thought about. Um, so we go from our blend to our single malts. We move over to our Craig Ellicke style. So remember, 40 whiskeys, single malt whiskeys, lighter in style. One thing to note, this is a very approachable whiskey because it, they, they have a really delicate approach. They use a long fermentation. A longer fermentation draws out more citrus forward notes. It brings on the honey qualities of the whiskey. And then what they're doing is they're having, they have really tall stills. So those two factors contribute to a nice, delicate honey, spice, some baked apple. It's the water source that feeds this distillery is known as the Pachilli Burn, which is why we call this the Golden Dram. Back in the day, people of that area would pan for gold in the Pachilli Burn, and if they found any, they would have to return it to the queen. But we can presume that that may not have been in what they did, but we know that they did enjoy their whiskey. So we go from those styles to our big fuller body whiskeys that are non-chill filtered. You're going to get a little bit more of that tropical fruit note, some spice and color from the sherry cask finishing in Craig Ellicke. And then you move into a single malt whiskey like Royal Bracola that has so much more of that spice sherry quality because it's finished in a first fill Oloroso cask. Oftentimes the finishing is done in a second fill. But when you get those first fill expressions like you have here with Royal Bracola, you really start to see the magic that takes place. Um, now I'm going to pause for a moment because I've just 
monologue for the last 10-15 minutes. I'm just going to scroll back and see if there's any questions out there. And if you have any, please feel free to put them in there. I would happily answer them. If you have any of them, just give me one sec. Yes, hello. And thank you all for coming today. It's a real treat to work with Jax and you know, they've, uh, they've opened this up for us uh, to get out here and, and share these wonderful drams with you all today. Uh, would I suggest a KS check if you're still there? Uh, you could absolutely sugar this rim. You know, there's, you don't necessarily need to do, uh, uh, you know, a, a, I just wanted to do this for show today. That is certainly not how I would garnish my toddies every time. Normally what I would do, I would certainly add a little cinnamon stick. You could have a sugared wheel. That would be pretty nice, especially around the holidays, getting a little extra sugar. That's a bright light. Pardon me. Um, so you could do a sugared rim. Um, that's totally your call. I would recommend if you're sugaring a rim, just sugar half of it because maybe not every sip you want to have that sugary bit. Now let's see what we got. I'm just going to scroll down. Pardon me, folks. Now, I, I do hope that you, you take the time to uh, enjoy, some, enjoy some wonderful whiskeys over the holidays. Uh, you know, Jack's Liquor Store has an amazing variety of single malts and blended scotch and all other spirits for your delights and your enjoyment. Uh, you know, and play safe out there, folks. Uh, these are strange times. So it's important to be well. Uh, if you're consuming alcohol, do it so responsibly. And if you're in the neighborhood and you're around a Jack's Liquor Store, find your way down there, pick yourself up a bottle of Dewar's, Aberfeldy, Craig Ellicke, Royal Bracola, anything, and start to explore. You know, take your time and get into the whiskeys uh, in a mature and fun, approachable way because whiskey and spirits are meant to be enjoyed and they're meant to be explored. There's lots of history and lots of stories. It's been a pleasure to chat with you today in this brief 15 minutes. Uh, thank you all for coming. Thank you, Jack Slicker, for having me. I look forward to seeing you all next week when we get back on our next session. Thank you very much.